A portable monitor for PS5 gamers and editors? Yes, it also supports HDR and gives you over 500 nits peak brightness. There is a 144Hz model too which we'll talk about it soon. Here we have the Arzopa 2.5K HDR 500 monitor which they sent to me for free and I appreciate it. In this video I'm gonna review this model which has a 2.5K resolution and supports HDR. Works perfectly with PC and Mac, but you can also use it on PS5, PS4, your phone, and almost any other device that can output a picture from USB or HDMI and get a 1440p resolution. The build quality is good and it's super slim. I mean, if you can take your PS5 or your laptop with you on a trip, this monitor won't be an issue to carry. Of course, you can use it with Nintendo Switch and Steam Deck too, but in this video, we're gonna test it on PS5 and PC. The stand design is really good. It can bend in various positions and not only you can take advantage of that, but you can use this stand for both horizontal and vertical modes and it keeps the monitor in various fixed positions. On the left side we have three input ports, a mini HDMI and two type C ports which can be used as input signal or power or both at the same time. There is a pair of speakers on both sides that gives you a stereo audio. We have the OSD settings button, a volume and brightness button and a power button. The screen finish is matte and it reduces a lot of reflections. I'm personally a fan of glossy screens, but considering this is a portable monitor and could be used anywhere, the matte finish helps with reducing reflections if you can't control them, which is very good. We have a Type-C to Type-C, an HDMI to Mini HDMI and a Type-C to Type-A cable in the box with a warranty card and a user guide. The screen to body ratio is okay, but what is so important to me is the picture quality. This monitor uses an IPS panel and therefore it has a typical contrast issue similar to other IPS panels. The website information says it's 1200 to 1 and from the comparison I made with my other monitor which is 1100 to 1, it has a higher contrast, so it's safe to say it's around 1200 to 1 contrast ratio. There are no local limbing or dimming zones to enhance contrast and you can see how it looks to play a very bright object in a dark room. However, for testing purposes I made ISO too high on the camera and it looks much better in real life. The SDR and HDR brightness on this monitor goes above 540 nits based on a few tests I made in different window sizes and various content. There is almost no ABL or automatic brightness limiting on different window sizes on SDR or HDR. So you will get above 500 nits full white picture too. The viewing angles are pretty good which is expected as it's an IPS panel. It's even better than my G27Q monitor which I brought to compare in this video as that monitor is also 2.5K and has a 500 nits HDR brightness. The screen uniformity is pretty good and unless you are in a dark room with zero lights on a dark background, you won't see backlight bleeding. It looks good and the color accuracy is very good compared to other IPS panels. 100% sRGB color gamut. It's fully compatible with Mac and Windows and it's plug and play. You could use it as a secondary monitor at your work or when traveling or at your office. And for me, it's useful at home too because I can edit faster when I have my scripts on this monitor and I can drag and drop files easily to my projects. Of course, I won't do color grading on an IPS panel, but yeah, it's great as a secondary monitor. But what about PS5 and gaming? It supports 720p, 1080p and 1440p on PS5 without VRR or ALLM. The input lag was low based on a few tests I made. I've got something like 7 to 8 milliseconds on average in 1440p with the official cable. However, there must be more tests to confirm, but I can tell the input lag is pretty much low for a portable monitor. You can power it up with the USB-C on your PS5 or you can use any other port from your PS5. The back ports or even the front top a port and based on the test I made they provide enough power which is 5 volt with at least 2.5 ampere for max brightness. It worked without any issues but let's talk about the aspect ratio of 16 by 10. I tested it on Windows 11 and it was able to output the native resolution and the aspect ratio of 16 by 10 was working perfectly. However if you noticed on PS5 the picture was a bit stretched but yeah that's the only downside if you want this specific model for PS5. Other models even support 144Hz and 120Hz in 1080p with PS5, which might be a better choice for gaming mainly. But I chose this one because I want to use it when traveling with my laptop. The HDR works with Windows too and there is no problem with that. I can also use it with my DSLR camera to get a bigger picture if I'm recording outside, which is pretty cool. As far as I tested it up to 1 to 8 
thousand seconds exposure on my camera i didn't notice any flickering so i think and i say i think because i didn't see the info on the website and i don't have enough tools to confirm it's probably flicker free or it's too high and you won't notice it this monitor has two speakers to provide a stereo output they're not strong and are weaker in lower frequencies here's a comparison between phone speaker and our zopa monitor speakers playing music As you heard, my phone was a bit louder, but yeah, you don't expect a very good speaker on such a super slim portable monitor. Now it's time to take a look at the OST settings and my recommended settings for this monitor and PS5 if you have one. The first thing is you can only change aspect to 4x3 or wide native. And due to the 16x10 ratio, some consoles like PS5 and Nintendo may look a bit stretched vertically. If you use HDR on PS5, ensure to keep HDR mode to auto, otherwise you have to calibrate HDR again or you won't get peak brightness. If you can't change brightness settings, first reset the settings from OSD settings. And this way the settings will unlock. Brightness can be adjusted from 0 to 100 which gives a good amount of control. The contrast affects the difference between bright and dark areas. If you make it higher you'd lose details in highlights. I suggest leaving it on 50. The echo mode is picture mode. What I found the best among all modes is not the game mode but the standard mode. However, I chose a movie mode for ps5 and it seems to give me a more accurate picture and a bit warmer too i suggest movie mode if you're not happy with the standard the dsr dynamic contrast ratio typically should help with more details in shadows and make them less gray which in this case of the ips panel is by reducing the full backlight but yeah i found it making things too dark so i suggest keeping it off unless you play in a dark room i also suggest keeping sharpness on the default which is 2 and for the color temp change it to user i try to calibrate calibrated to target accurate colors to my LG C2 which is calibrated with the ratings.com and I found these values 50, 48, 47 gave me the closest results to that. You can change how transparent the OSD is and that's almost all you need. If you set HDR mode to 2084 tone mapping, ensure to calibrate your PS5 HDR again. I suggest keeping it on auto and this is how the picture will look. Actually nice. So I tested it with multiple tools to see how much power it uses. Even on 100% screen brightness, it uses less than 2.5 ampere and 5 volts. Both with my power bank and PS5. To ensure the power usage, I tested it once again with my micro power monitor. And as I was decreasing the screen brightness, the power usage was going much lower. On 0%, it was just using almost 4.5 watts, which equals to 5 volts and 0.9 amperes. So if you don't have enough power, you can use it with less brightness. On max brightness, that is 100%, also in HDR, which provides a bit higher brightness, it was using about 12 watts, which equals to 5 volts and 2. 2.4 ampere yeah so what they said about 2.5 ampere or 3 ampere and higher is true but 2.5 would be enough too no problem and your ps5 can do that too most pc and laptop ports as well even your power bank and even your phone port can turn the monitor on but your battery won't last long keep that in mind speaking of a power bank i tested it with a power bank capable of 10,000 milliampere hour and it took three minutes on 50 percent brightness and 50 percent volume to use a one percent of the power bank battery so 100 percent of a 10,000 milliampere hour could probably last about 300 minutes on 50 percent brightness this is 250 nits and it's just in case you don't have any other power source which is still an okay power usage for travelers or people like me who may want to use it for their camera outside so do i recommend using a portable monitor it depends on your needs it comes so handy to me personally for recording with my camera outside using it as a secondary monitor for my laptop when traveling and editing and maybe even with my ps5 it depends on you but if you want to get it only for ps5 the 144 hertz model with a 16 by 9 screen ratio with 300 nits brightness at 1080p might be a better option especially for gamers i told you why i decided to go with this model because of higher brightness and my main usage is using it as a secondary monitor for my laptop up 
and editing but you know your needs better in case you're wondering there are two links in the description and pinned comment that lead you to both the 2.5k 60 hertz model and 1080p 144 hertz model give it a look and if you think it is something you like you can order directly from arzopa thanks for watching let me know what you think about this monitor in the comments and i'll catch you in the next one